<laughs> if you had a time machine and could take a journey back in time, you would not want to go back to a period that would have been the absolute worst time to be alive, roughly 800,000 years ago. This period was not just tough, it was an existential crisis for the human species and our ancestors were teetering on the brink of extinction. This was a time of unimaginable hardship for early humans, a period marked by severe glaciation, devastating droughts, and a catastrophic meteor impact that left the skies dark and the ground scarred. In fact, it might be one of the most challenging eras in all of human history, where only the most intelligent and adaptable savages survived. Beyond the glaciation, drought, geomagnetic reversal and meteor impact, this was a time when humanity was truly on the brink. With only a small number of humans left, scattered across an unforgiving landscape, the odds of surviving were slim. Yet incredibly, some of our ancestors managed to survive, enduring unimaginable hardship and passing their genes down to future generations. But out of this dark chapter in prehistory came resilience. Our ancestors didn't just survive, they adapted and, in doing so, set the stage for the eventual rise of modern humans. It's humbling to think that if even a few more of those early humans had perished, the entire human race might have been wiped out. Indeed, this time period coincides with the estimated time of the reduction in number of chromosome pairs from 28 to 26 pairs of chromosomes. This split effectively separated modern humans from more archaic hominins that would have been around after this time. Some estimates also place the split between our last common ancestor and the Neanderthal Denisovan lineage to as far back as 800,000 years ago. What's more, the evolution of many genes related to skin pigmentation can also be traced to this time period, suggesting that this was an important factor in human survival. As regards to the morphological distinction between Homo sapiens and our last common ancestor, Homo erectus, some paleoanthropologists recognize them as subspecies, Homo sapiens sapiens and Homo sapiens erectus, in accordance with their overlapping morphology and genetics. As we begin our journey back, almost one million years ago, you might picture vast, untamed landscapes teeming with ancient animals, mammoths, saber-toothed cats, and our distant hominin ancestors living off the land. But the reality was far harsher. The Earth was entering a critical period of glaciation, part of a series of ice ages that would wax and wane over the next several hundred thousand years. During this time, Eurasia was subjected to intense cooling. Huge ice sheets advanced from the poles, covering much of what is now northern Europe, Russia and Asia. Imagine endless expanses of glaciers, with temperatures plunging well below freezing. The once lush forests and grasslands of Eurasia were replaced by barren tundra. Any early humans or other hominins living in this region faced an unrelenting struggle to survive in an environment that seemed determined to push life to the brink. Prey would have been scarce. Hunting large game like mammoths and reindeer required incredible skill and cooperation. Those who survived would have had to rely on each other more than ever before, banding together in small, tight-knit groups, huddling in caves or makeshift shelters to escape the brutal cold. But it wasn't just the ice that made this period a nightmare. As the ice sheets advanced in the north, massive droughts gripped much of Africa. While Eurasia was locked in a deep freeze, Africa, where some of our early ancestors still lived, wasn't faring much better. Over a 120,000-year period, the continent experienced prolonged and severe droughts, with cycles of aridity drying up lakes and rivers that had once been sources of life. As a matter of fact, the African landscape during this time would have been almost unrecognizable. Regions that are now covered in lush savannas were transformed into parched deserts, with little vegetation to sustain the creatures that lived there. Early human populations in Africa, including Homo erectus, would have found themselves in an unforgiving environment, competing with one another for dwindling resources. Water would have been more precious than gold, and many of the animals these early humans relied on for food, including buffalo, antelope and other game, would have either migrated away or died off. The once vibrant grasslands were replaced by barren expanses of dry, cracked earth, where every day was a fight for survival. The droughts reshaped the land itself, 
transforming once thriving ecosystems into desolate, lifeless plains. However, the Red Sea nearly dried up, creating an escape route out of this hellhole. Just when things couldn't seem to get any worse for these early humans, the planet was hit by a cosmic event that changed everything. Around 790,000 years ago, a massive meteor or comet struck the Earth, creating what is known as the Australasian Tektite Field. This catastrophic event was centered in Southeast Asia, likely somewhere in present-day Indochina, and the impact was so powerful that debris from the explosion was spread across nearly 10% of the Earth's surface. Tektites, small glassy fragments created by the intense heat of the impact, rained down over a vast area stretching from Southeast Asia to Australia and even as far as Antarctica. The skies would have darkened for weeks or even months as clouds of dust and debris were thrown into the atmosphere, blocking out the sun and plunging much of the planet into darkness. The fiery glow of the meteor would have been visible for hundreds of miles around the impact site, turning night into day for those unlucky enough to be nearby. The immediate aftermath of the impact would have been apocalyptic in a huge region around modern-day Laos. The land around the impact site would have been scorched, with forests reduced to ashes and wildlife decimated by the blast. Even far from the impact, the air would have been filled with a choking haze. The cooling effect of the dust and debris blocking out the sun likely caused a sudden drop in temperatures, creating what's known as an impact winter. Trees and vegetation would have died off, plunging early humans into an even deeper struggle for survival. As if the devastation caused by the meteor impact wasn't enough, the Earth underwent a geomagnetic reversal just years later. The reversal, which occurred approximately 780,000 years ago and lasted 22,000 years, was one of the most significant geomagnetic events in Earth's history. Scientists currently disagree whether there is a connection between the comet strike and the geomagnetic reversal, but it seems to be quite a coincidence that both events happened around the same time. During a geomagnetic reversal, the Earth's magnetic field weakens and flips, with the magnetic north and south poles swapping places. While this doesn't happen overnight, it can take thousands of years for the process to complete, the weakening of the magnetic field would have had profound effects on the planet. Without the full strength of the magnetic field to shield the Earth from solar radiation, early humans may have experienced increased levels of harmful radiation from the Sun. Also, according to another peer-reviewed study in the journal Science, human skin tone has varied for 900,000 years, and some ancestral light skin gene variants are shared between modern African Bushmen and archaic hominins such as Neanderthals and Denisovans, which suggests a shared common ancestry for this trait before the split of the three hominin lineages. The impact itself was likely felt across the entire planet, contributing to the population bottleneck and pushing early humans even closer to the edge of extinction. Many archaeological sites are now dated using this geomagnetic reversal because the polarity of rocks during this time can be used to determine if the site dates to before or after 790,000 years ago. While geomagnetic pole reversals, where the Earth's magnetic north and south poles switch places, are a well-documented phenomenon in geological history, the mechanisms behind these reversals are still not fully understood. Most scientific studies attribute pole reversals to processes within Earth's core, but the idea of an external trigger, such as a comet impact, remains speculative yet fascinating. Comets are icy, rocky bodies originating from the outer solar system. When a large comet collides with Earth, it releases an immense amount of energy. Such impacts have been associated with catastrophic events in Earth's history, including mass extinctions and potential alterations in Earth's geological processes. The hypothesis linking a comet impact to geomagnetic pole reversal suggests that the intense physical and thermal forces generated by such an impact could disrupt the Earth's internal magnetic field. Earth's magnetic field is generated by the movement of molten iron within the outer core, which acts like a giant dynamo. A comet impact could theoretically influence this dynamo in several ways. The energy from a comet impact could send shock waves deep into the Earth, reaching the core. 
these shock waves might alter the flow of molten iron, disturbing the delicate convection patterns necessary for the geomagnetic field stability. If the dynamo is disturbed enough, it could destabilize the magnetic field and possibly trigger a pole reversal. A significant impact could also result in massive crustal movements such as earthquakes, volcanic eruptions or the generation of tsunamis. These surface changes may not directly cause a pole reversal, but they could contribute to instabilities in the Earth's geomagnetic field. While the comet impact theory for pole reversals is largely speculative, there are intriguing correlations between major comet or asteroid impacts and periods of magnetic instability in Earth's history. Geomagnetic pole reversals typically take thousands to tens of thousands of years to complete. It is unlikely that a comet impact would instantly trigger a reversal. However, it could initiate processes that destabilize the magnetic field, making a reversal more likely to occur in the near future. Therefore, while the concept of a comet impact causing a geomagnetic pole reversal is intriguing, it remains a speculative hypothesis. A large enough comet impact could, in theory, disturb the Earth's internal dynamo or magnetosphere, potentially triggering or accelerating a reversal. Whatever the case, many scientists believe that these conditions caused a significant population bottleneck for early humans. A population bottleneck occurs when a species experiences a sharp reduction in its numbers, often due to environmental disasters or other pressures. In this case, the freezing temperatures and drought likely caused human populations to drop dramatically, perhaps to as few as a few thousand individuals. Imagine living in a world where your tribe is one of the only groups of humans left on Earth. The vast expanses of land, once teeming with life, are now nearly empty, with only small, scattered bands of survivors eking out an existence. The genetic diversity of the human species would have been dramatically reduced, meaning the few humans who survived would become the ancestors of all modern humans today. According to genetic evidence from living modern humans, it's believed that during this time, the global human population dwindled to a shockingly small number. Some estimates suggest that there were likely no more than 1,280 breeding individuals alive at the lowest point, although other studies suggest it could have been even fewer, perhaps as low as a few hundred breeding individuals. This drastic reduction in numbers is referred to as a population bottleneck a genetic squeeze that occurs when a large portion of a species dies off or fails to reproduce, leaving only a small, isolated group to carry on. These remaining individuals were the ancestors of all modern humans. The bottleneck severely reduced genetic diversity, and this has left its mark in our DNA even today. The exact dates of this bottleneck are difficult to pinpoint with complete accuracy, but genetic studies and paleoclimatic data give us a rough window. Evidence suggests that this severe population decline began around 930,000 years ago, continuing for tens of thousands of years as the planet experienced brutal environmental shifts. The most critical period of the bottleneck likely occurred between 930,000 and 813,000 years ago, coinciding with the harshest phases of glaciation in the Northern Hemisphere and the worst droughts in Africa. The population may have remained at critically low levels for as long as 117,000 years, before eventually rebounding as conditions improved. Geneticists have traced back our genetic diversity to this crucial period, identifying a clear pinch point in the human genome that reflects this bottleneck. As our ancestors rebounded and spread across the globe once conditions improved, they carried with them the genetic legacy of this time, less diversity but perhaps greater resilience. Interestingly, this bottleneck also coincides with a key moment in human evolution. Around 800,000 years ago, hominins began to show signs of greater intelligence and innovation. This could have been a result of the intense pressures they faced. Only the most adaptable, inventive individuals survived, passing on their genes and their problem-solving abilities to future generations. These groups evolved into modern humans and our cousins, the Neanderthals and Denisovans, who split into different lineages in Africa, Western Eurasia and Eastern Eurasia around this time. In conclusion, the period between 780,000 and 930,000 years ago 
was one of the harshest and most challenging times in human history. From the devastating effects of glaciation and drought to the catastrophic impact of the Australasian tektite event and the destabilizing effects of a geomagnetic reversal, early humans faced a perfect storm of environmental disasters. And with that tantalizing statement, we leave you to ponder the mysteries of our shared human history. And before you go, please share, comment, and check out the other videos on our channel. Thank you, and take care.